beautiful winter wonderland we've found ourselves in today. It looks like everything is covered in a delicate, untouched blanket of snow. The only thing that could possibly make this better would be if someone were to start a snowball fight! We seem to be in the middle of an epic snowball fight. Don't worry though, I know how we can avoid getting pummeled with these freezing projectiles. The rules are simple. I'll give you a name of a Bible character, then I'll show you three snowballs with facts about that Bible character. Two of these facts will be true, but one will not be. That's the snowball that's about to come flying right at you. All you have to do to avoid it though, is hold up the number of fingers for the snowball that's not telling the truth. One, two, or three. If you get it right, you're still in the game. If not, you can keep playing, but please take a seat. Easy enough, right? Great! Everybody on your feet! It's time for this snowball fight to begin! Our first Bible character is Daniel. Now, which of these is not true about Daniel? One, Daniel spent a night in a den of lions. Two, Daniel prayed regularly. Three, Daniel was Esther's father. Remember, hold up one, two, or three fingers based on which snowball you think is not telling the truth. Okay, time's up. Who's holding up three fingers? <laughs> You're correct. Daniel was thrown into a den of lions because he did pray regularly, but he was not Esther's dad. Good job. Let's try another. Our next Bible character is Adam. Now, which of these is not true about Adam? One, Adam built the ark. Two, Adam was the first man. Three, Adam was married to Eve. Okay, time to get those fingers up. Which snowball do you think is not telling the truth? Time's up! Who's holding up one finger? Because you just avoided a snowball. Noah was actually the person who built the ark. <laughs> Let's do another one. Moses is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Moses? One, Moses saw a burning bush. Two, Moses walked on water. Three, Moses spoke with Pharaoh. All right, it's time to decide. Which snowball do you think is not telling the truth? Time's up! Who's holding up two fingers? You are correct! Moses never walked on water. <laughs> Let's try another. Ruth is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Ruth? One, Ruth married Boaz. Two, Ruth was from Moab. Three, Ruth was Naomi's mother. So what do you think? Which of these snowballs is incorrect and therefore about to come flying right at us? Time's up! Who's holding up three fingers? You are correct! <laughs> Ruth was actually Naomi's daughter-in-law. Good job! Paul is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Paul? One, Paul was swallowed by a fish. Two, Paul used to be called Saul. Three, Paul was blinded by a bright light. It's time to decide which of these snowballs is not telling the truth. That's it, time's up. Who's holding up one finger? You are correct! Jonah was swallowed by a fish, not Paul. Nice work. Mary is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Mary? One, Mary was married to Joseph. Two, Mary was a carpenter. Three, Mary was Jesus' mother. So, what do you think? Which of these snowballs is not being completely honest? Time's up! Who 
Who's holding up three fingers? You should be holding up only two. Joseph was a carpenter, not Mary. Abraham is our next Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Abraham? One, Abraham had a son named Isaac. Two, Abraham moved to the Promised Land. Three, Abraham was Israel's first king. It's time to make your choice. Which of these snowballs is not telling the truth? Time's up! Who's holding up three fingers? You are correct! Saul was actually Israel's first king. Are you still standing? If so, very impressive. We've got one more round to go. Joseph from the Old Testament is our final Bible character. Now, which of these is not true about Joseph? One, Joseph was the son of Pharaoh. Two, Joseph had a colorful coat. Three, Joseph was thrown in prison. Which of these snowballs is not telling the truth? Time's up! Who is holding up one finger? You are correct! Joseph was the son of Jacob, but he worked for Pharaoh. Great job, everyone! Uh, I don't know about you, but I could go for some hot chocolate right about now. Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help God, you're always there for me Wherever you lead me, I can follow you God, you're always there for me Oh God, you're always there for me Help me believe you know what's best for me Feel it in my soul When you are in control I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I do what I should do When you help me choose I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah One, one, one life to live And I wanna live it your way Whenever I'm lost and I don't know where to turn God, you're always there for me Wherever I go, you're always by my side God, you're always there for me Oh God, you're always there for me So help me believe you know what's best for me When you are in control I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah, I do what I should do When you help me choose I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah, I got one life to live and I wanna live it your way Oh yeah Yeah God help us to be more like you your way is the best way. I feel it in my soul when you are in control. I got one life to live and I want to live it your way. Oh yeah, I do what I should do when you help me choose. I got one life to live and I want to live it your way. Oh yeah, I feel it in my soul when you are in control. I got one life to live and I want to live it your way. It's me, Jacob. Sorry, I was just watching an episode of The Metal Mania. One second. <laughs> <laughs>
it's almost over. No, Metal Manion, don't go through that door. Oh, that's it? It's over? What will happen to the Metal Manion? Will he live to fight another day? Find out now on the next episode of The Metal Manion. Oh, I can watch it now! Yes! I mean, I can't watch it right now because I have to. I mean, I get to talk to you about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should, even when you don't want to. Sorry, I'm just, I, uh, I love that show. <laughs> but I just, I feel like every episode is a cliffhanger that just makes you want to watch another one and another one. You know how cliffhangers are, or maybe you call them nail biters. But um, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't watch TV all the time because uh, um, you get uh, you gotta like self you gotta find self control in in your life. Watch out, Melvinian! Sorry, that was just really a that was just a really cool part. Uh, okay, I'm good now. No more binge watching. No more distractions. I am here for you. You have my. Complete and utter attention. I have to know. And no, but I must, but I can't. <sighs> Boy, this is gonna be harder than I thought. No. In today's story, we'll learn about what happens when you have too much of a good thing. Will Jacob be able to resist the metal battalion? Will he learn a lesson about self-control? Find out in the next few minutes. I sure hope so. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 16. Adeline and her younger brother Zeke had been waiting weeks for this particular Saturday. It's here! Yes day! Every year, their parents declared a yes day, where they would say yes to anything Adeline and Zeke wanted to do, with a few rules. We're not spending more than $15 each on anything other than meals. And we're not doing anything that could hurt you or anyone else. Can we have donuts for breakfast? Yes. A and ice cream? Yes. With whipped cream and gummy bears? Yep. Yes! Fueled by this sugar rush, Zeke and Adeline had energy to burn. Can we have a family water battle? Oh, kids against parents. Absolutely. The kids' super soakers were beating their parents' water balloons until Dad busted out the water hose. Hey, you can't use the house. Yes, do everything. OK, fine. Pizza from Pizzano's for lunch. And monster cookies. Can I make them all by myself, please, please, please? Yes and yes. Dad and Adeline rode scooters to the store to get cookie ingredients. Yes! While Mom and Zeke took bikes to get pizza. Oh, uh, yeah! Pretty sure that me riding a scooter half a mile is gonna hurt someone. Probably me. It's sidewalk the whole way, Dad. Back at home, Adeline concocted the monster cookies with all the add-ins. Chocolate chips, M&Ms, peanut butter, toffee bits, candy corn, crushed pretzels. Are you sure that's gonna taste okay? Yes. When the giant cookies were out of the oven and cooled, everyone had to agree. Mmm, these are actually amazing. Zeke and Mom could only give thumbs up as they chewed. After lunch, Dad and Zeke said yes to an epic battle of Ultra Luigi together. Well, Mom said yes to a nap. Adeline planned to say yes to a new episode of Super Chef Junior, but as she was leaving the kitchen, she paused and looked back at the plate of monster cookies. They did turn out awesome. It almost seemed as if those gooey cookies were calling her name. Adeline! Adeline! Well, it is yes.
best day. Adeline grabbed another cookie for now and one for while she watched Super Chef Junior. When Adeline finished her episode and the cookies, she passed through the kitchen to find Zeke and Dad. The cookie seemed to smile at her with candy-coated faces. Well, yes, just one more. In the rec room, Dad and Zeke were still battling it out. He says you want to play? Adeline wanted to say yes, but her stomach felt a little queasy, and the flashing screen made her head spin. Uh, I'll just sit this one out. Don't suppose you could bring us a couple of those incredible cookies? Um, sure. In the kitchen, Adeline put two giant cookies on a paper plate. Okay, fine. Even though her stomach didn't feel great, Adeline just couldn't resist that wonderful, chewy cookie bite and candy crunch. She finished off yet another cookie on her way down to the rec room. Here you go. Thanks, sweetie. Hey, are you okay? Adeline grabbed her stomach as it churned. Her mouth felt sour. Yes. Um, no. Adeline sat down quickly on the sofa, but the storm in her stomach grew. She bolted off of the sofa and headed straight for the bathroom. It didn't take long for all those cookies, not to mention pizza, ice cream, and donuts to come right back up. Dad rushed in to help. Oh, sweetie, I, I know we've said yes to a lot of sugar today, but... Just how many cookies did you eat? Um, I'm not sure. Too many. Whoa, that is seriously disgusting. Mom was right behind Zeke. Adeline? I'm feeling better now, Mom. Honest, just too many cookies. Once they were back in the rec room, Dad shook his head. You're a walking proverb. You mean proverbs in the Bible? Sure. There's this great one that says, if you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you will throw up. Ugh, true story. Dude, did you put honey in the cookies? No, it doesn't have to be honey. It can be anything. I was going to ask what everyone wants for dinner, but... Toast, applesauce. Affirmative. I guess sometimes you gotta say no, even on yes day. Adeline's yes day hadn't gone quite the way she imagined but at least she discovered a new skill to work on, knowing when to stop. Sometimes when it comes to self-control, you need a little help. That should do it. King Solomon wrote, if you find honey, eat just enough. If you eat too much of it, you will throw up. You notice that Solomon didn't write that there was anything wrong with eating honey, but you can have too much of a good thing. You have to know when stop. This isn't just true with honey either. For some people, they can't stop playing video games. Jump, dive, collect extra health. Some people can't stop eating sweets. For some people, it can even be sports. Okay, I got soccer at nine. I got hockey at 10. Boxing after that, right before lunch, I'm gonna get some football in. After lunch, I'm gonna get some baseball in. Cornhole, pickleball, jujitsu. Now, none of those things are bad things by themselves, but if you don't know when to stop, even good things can get out of hand. If you find yourself thinking about that something all the time, it could be a clue that you need to stop. If you find yourself sneaking behind somebody's back so you can just watch one more video or eat just one more cookie, you might need to stop. If you're not sure what that something is for you, ask someone you can trust to help you see it and maybe even help you stop. The one thing to remember today is this, know when to stop. This is a tough one, but remember, Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you some help when you choose to follow Jesus. You don't have to experience these nail biters on your own. I'm still looking forward to watching more of my show.
but I think I'll wait until tomorrow at the very least. And if you need any help knowing when to stop, take it from me. You're gonna need a lot of duct tape. I'll see you next time.